Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make a chocolate courgette cake. Now it's absolutely fantastic. It was given to me by an allotment award winner who'd won awards for this cake when she'd enter competitions. So it's absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favourite cakes to make. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you get lots of helpful hints from my home garden, my home kitchen, and also my allotment. So first of all, you need to put your oven on gas mark three. So I'm going to do that first, so it's warming up. The ingredients I will put in the description so you can make this for yourself, but I've already mixed some of the things together to make it a little bit quicker. So in here, I've got flour, cocoa, spice and salt, and I've already combined that. In this bowl, I have oil, sugar, eggs, vanilla, and also I'm going to stir in the courgette as well. So I'm just gonna combine that in together. So on the measurements for the courgette, it is a pint jug full. So you don't push it down, you grate it and you just gently do a jug full. So it's not by weight, so it's a little bit different to what you're probably used for. Now give it a little bit of a mix, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna combine the two together. I'll give it a little shake off. A helpful tip when you're mixing dry ingredients together, rather than sieve them, um, I already whisked that with this when it was dry to mix the ingredients together and to put a little bit of air into it. So I pop that in there. And all we do now is mix the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients. Use spatulas to make sure you get every last bit in. I hate to see any waste. Give it a bit more of a faster bit. Like so. Then I'm going to lift it up, scrape around the outside, make sure everything is combined. And then I'll beat it for a little bit longer just to make sure that every little bit, because the last thing you want is a little dry bit in the bottom. So mix it around with a spatula, scrape it off like so. That's probably almost done, but I am just gonna give it a little more beat. Like so, and that's ready to put into your baking trays. Now, you've got a choice how you cook this. You can cook it as one big cake in an 8 inch ring, or you can cook it in two sandwich tins, which is what I'm going to do because I've got friends coming around this evening. Or you can divide it up into muffin trays. So it's really up to you. You just have to bear in mind that the cooking time will be slightly different. So I will, again, put that on the description so you know the difference in cooking time. So all I'm going to do now is put it in between the different um, baking trays that I've got. Now, one top tip to equally divide your mixture is actually to weigh it. So I'm going to get my scales and I'm going to spread it out equally using my scales. I do this quite a lot because it's so incredibly easy to get too much in one and not enough in the other. And it doesn't have to be exact but it's nice to get it about right. So I'll just pour some in. So I've put about 600 in there. And I'm going to put 600 in the other one and then just continue dividing it until I get it about even. So, if you haven't got a set of these scales, they are really good, I've got to say. Uh, for jobs like this, it's um, really quite fantastic. So nearly there. Do you know what? I guess that about right. I did 600 in each, so I've got a little bit left. And again, I don't like to waste anything at all. It's all good mixture. So my husband gets quite upset because he doesn't always get quite so much to, to eat the raw cake mixture, which is quite partial to. He's feeling this at the moment and he's probably thinking he's not going to leave me any. But he'll get plenty when it's cooked, is all I'm going to say. I hope he gets enough treats. So, last little bit. Like I say, I like to get every little last bit out. 
My spatula is perfect for that. You just equally divide it. So it's now going to go into the oven. Gas mark three. I'm going to put it in for half an hour and then I'm going to test it. So the cake's been in for 30 minutes. I did test it and it wasn't quite ready, so I've given it another 10. So let's see how it's doing now. So just lift it out and give it a test. So it's firm to the touch and it bounces back. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to lift them out. As you can see, I use cake liners. They work really well, far easier than cutting the paper down you just slip them in I don't even butter the dishes because the actual ring is non-stick and it just literally just you know just lifts out I'll leave them in there for about 10 minutes before I lift it out onto the wire rack but then I will cool them down before I ice them so the cakes have cooked and they would cooled down I've made up a simple buttercream icing and frosting which I will put in the description but it's basically just butter cocoa ice and sugar and some water but I will put it in the description you just beat it up so this mine is a, like a Victoria sandwich I need to put some in the middle and some on the top one of my top tips to putting frosting on is to put some hot water in a jug with your palette knife because it helps you spread it out a little bit more so it just stops it from dragging so much. So I'm going to put out a little bit and then I'm going to get my palette knife and I will show you what I mean. So this is a real top tip. So there we go, give it a bit of a shake. You don't want excessive moisture on there. But as you can see, that helps you spread the frosting on a lot easier, like so. And it just makes life a lot easier. And when you get to do the top, you can actually make it into quite a nice pattern. So I'm going to flip this one over because what I want to do is try and evenly distribute the icing between the two. So this actually took about 40 minutes to cook in the end, but I did test it after 30 because you never know. Sometimes it can cook just that little bit quicker. So it's just worth testing it and then giving it a little bit longer so that it's, it's cooked properly and not overdone. So, let's just dip that back in there. Give it a little bit of a tap, like so, and then just spread, spread the mixture over evenly, like so. Quite therapeutic actually putting the icing on. Now you can obviously put some sprinkles on the top. I've got guests coming around this evening. So I will be putting a few sprinkles and a few extra chocolates on there to make it look extra, extra glamorous. And I'm still trying to decide whether I'm going to let them know there's courgette in it or whether I'm just going to see if they notice. So obviously just lift the top on and there we go. That is your chocolate courgette cake so I hope you enjoy making it as much as I do and I know we're going to love eating it as well so I'd love to have your feedback if you tell me what you think of it when you've made it as well